Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Welcome to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast and posse. I'm your host, Tiffany, and uh, you are definitely getting uh, some Tiff rant today. And you're also going to hear me just generally venting. There's a purpose behind it. I love a good vent, and I feel that it is long overdue. We're talking about toxic positivity and a bunch of other crap that is pissing me off in the online coaching space that I don't hear anyone else talking about, maybe because they don't want to ruffle feathers. They don't want to piss off Polly the influencer. They don't want anyone to think they're not, you know, being women, hashtag women supporting women or, or supporting other entrepreneurs or whatever it is. I really don't care. Because I know what is going on online right now and it's out of control is making you feel like shit. It's putting you in a state of comparison-itis, feeling less than, doubting yourself, creating shame, making you even want to avoid social media altogether, which is making you play small in your business and not show up and do the content that you need to do. It's causing all sorts of crap and I'm sick of it. And what I also don't like is how many of you have spent money, thousands of dollars, on programs, on masterminds, on courses, on coaching, on things that gave you these uh, false expectations and these insane overpromises of something that just straight up isn't possible. And you know I'm a master manifester and I'm all about expanding your own mind and believing what is possible and to think bigger and all that good stuff. I'm all about that, but I'm also a realist. That's my approach to manifesting and having an abundance mindset. It's like, you also have to be a realist. Your ass who has 300 followers is not going to create a $97 course and you talk about it a few times a week even and all of a sudden all these people are buying it while you're chilling on the couch and it's as easy as that. It's also not as easy as you going to a retreat and doing ayahuasca or some other form of drug of microdosing, and uh, we're going to get me started. I was going to say, don't get me started on it. We're getting started on it. And that I am now going to open up all my portals of and clear all of my deep traumas and things that are holding me back in a three-day period. It's not that all of this stuff can't be used as tools and things that can help you. It's how it's being marketed that pisses me off. And you have a role in it. Okay, I've fallen for a lot of stuff too. So it's like we can sit there and point the finger and say, oh my God, I paid this much for a program and I didn't really learn anything. It didn't work. I didn't get much out of it. Or I went to this event or I went to this retreat and yeah, it was like I got a little bump of motivation and not much else, but my you know business didn't grow at all and yada, yada, yada. My fo- I bought a course. My following didn't grow. Part of you wanted to believe the fantasy of what this person was selling. So it takes two people, right? A lot of these quote unquote gurus online are making it sound like they have the magic formula. They have something that you need that they're going to teach you. Or if you just learned these three things, all the money would flow in. You're going to get all the followers and all the stuff. And that's all you need to do is buy this one course and buy this one program or read this one book and you buy into it because you're human 
and you want it to be easy. Who doesn't want it to be easy? We want it to be easy. We want it to be quick. We want it to be as pain-free as possible. And then these people who I'm referring to show online like this life of ease. Like I easily just have $100,000 months with me backpacking through the United States. I easily just use my intuition and post when I feel about it and send an email when I feel about it. And all this money just connects and, and all these ideal clients are drawn to me. Guess what? That is their strategy. They're, the reason people are buying from them, and you, you've you probably bought from them too, is because it's mesmerizing. They're making it look easy. They're making it look effortless. They use shit like divine femininity. And I'm not saying there isn't positive stuff to learn from some of these tools, some of these things, energy forces, all the stuff. But it is not that simple. It's not that simple. And it is hard. And there are hard days. And it's not always going to be easy. And it's going to feel like crap before it feels good. And so many of you are not willing to sit in the dirty diaper period. And the dirty diaper period, it looks like this, right? You start off on a high because it's really exciting in the brainstorming, planning part of a business. You're filled with hope. You go into your manifestation world, which is beautiful, and there's bliss, and you have creative energy, and it's motivating. And then you go to execute and do the things, and you're not getting the validation. You're not seeing the results. You're not getting the cash. You're not getting the likes. You're not getting the DMs. People aren't reading your emails. No one's even downloading your freebies. It's seeming way harder than your thought. Then you go, what am, then it's like, what am I doing wrong? What am I missing? Then you buy stuff. You start buying things. You start studying people's stuff to see what you're doing wrong or what you're missing. And it feels so, so hard. And you're like, God, I feel like I'm doing all the things all the time and nothing seems to be connecting. Well, you're really not doing all the things. You're doing what you're comfortable doing. You're doing just enough. You're doing things that are just in your comfort zone. This is exactly what I did a lot of this bullshit when I started my first business is that I felt like I was doing all the things and I felt like I was doing so much and that nothing was working. And I would proclaim that. I would scream it. I would say it. I would yell at the universe. I would tell anyone who would listen. And the truth is, I wasn't doing any big, big things. I was not taking big action. I was not spending big cash investing in my business to get top-notch help. I was throwing spaghetti at a wall and hoping it would stick. I was putting out content and talking to different people through connections and I was going to conferences and all this stuff and then going, God, I'm doing all the things and it's not working. It's got to be me. It's got to be me. And yeah, guess what? It was me. It was because I wasn't really going all in with it. I wasn't hiring help. I, I wasn't hiring high quality help to direct me. And then I was looking at all these people who seem to be having success do it so easily and effortlessly with such joy and beautiful energy. And I was like, well, maybe the problem is I'm more someone who's more anxious. I'm not as positive as I need to be. Maybe it's my own mindset. So then I would try to force myself to be positive and then I'd get pissed when that works. The reality is, is there's this dirty diaper period where you have to keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up, keep investing, keep investing, keep investing, keep showing up when it's uncomfortable, when there's no reward, when it feels like nothing is working, and then the count compound effect finally hits, and not in your time, usually in a timing that is far past that is comfortable to you. I don't know anyone where the success hit in their desired timing. It's in divine timing. And it's almost like you have to prove to the universe, to God, that you're willing to sit in the dirty diaper and keep showing up even when it doesn't feel rewarding. 
But most of you end up taking your foot off the gas because it doesn't feel rewarding. It only feels draining. You're not getting any positive feedback. You're not getting much back. And then you're getting resentful and then you're getting discouraged. Then you're getting frustrated. So then you continue to take your foot off the gas, which will then in turn make it so you continue to not really get any results, which is a self-fulfilling prophecy. And then you're stuck in that loop. And then it a certain point pretty soon, you end up quitting or pressing the pause button on your damn dream business, all because you weren't willing to sit in the dirty diapers. That's why I wanted to talk about this today. There is no avoiding the dirty diaper. Sarah, the spiritual influencer, if if she's one who is actually making money, okay, and some are, if she's making money, her ass sat in the dirty diaper too. She did too. Her making it sound to you that it's as simple as this. You just need to be in this energy. You have to you have to embrace your feminine energy and get out of your masculine. I'm not saying that there isn't some beautiful work that can be done in that. But that's not going to cut it, honey. That is not that's not going to cut it. There is no way to bypass the hard of going after your dreams. Do you think Serena Williams was able to bypass the hard of training since she was a child to be a world multiple-time tennis champion? No. She had to sacrifice things. She had to work for it. She had to keep showing up when she would lose. She had to keep showing up to practice the shots she wasn't good at. She had to keep hiring people to help get her better for her mindset, spiritually, physically, all of the things over and over and over and over again. And that still didn't get guarantee a win. But it certainly hedged, put, hedged the bet, right? It certainly stacked the odds in her favor she was going to win. And that's what you're really doing when you're going after your dreams, when you're building a business. There are no guarantees. But I can guarantee if you don't do anything and you don't sit in the dirty diaper and you don't continue to show up, it ain't going to happen. And I don't think you want that. You want that freedom. You want that cash. You want that that amazing feeling of accomplishment and then being able to pay it forward. Because I know you guys are such heart-based entrepreneurs that you wouldn't be attracted to me or the show because I know how much that lights you up. And I know it can feel like your dream of having these things feels so far away and it seems like it hits so easy for other people that maybe you aren't cut out to do it. Maybe you don't have the it factor. Maybe you don't look a certain way. Maybe your skin is in a certain color. Maybe you don't speak in a way that some of these people speak. That is not the issue. The issue is you being willing to show up until it happens. Not I'll show up as long as I'm getting results, as long as I have evidence that it's progressing, as long as I have evidence that it's working. No, you show up until you are not going to get the evidence you want in the time frame you want. That's why I make a point of sharing with you guys. I started Project Me with Tiffany Carter already with 10 years of entrepreneurship under my belt. I've already built a company that brings in seven figures a year. I've already done that very different business model, right? Not not an online brand, but I've already done that. And guess what? That didn't matter. This was a completely new business, a completely new business model. The difference is, is I already have gone through the crap and I know you have to be willing to sit in the dirty diaper in order to get the reward. You have to be willing to do it. It'd be like you learning any sport. You know, if we use snowboarding, that's miserable to learn. You fall a million times. But if you really want to learn it and you want to have that beautiful feeling of going down the mountain and feeling the wind and feeling empowered and feeling balanced and comfortable on there and being in that scenery and feeling like a badass, well, in or- the catch to get it is you've got to be willing to fall a million times. And that might not be worth it to you in that scenario. So is it worth it to you to fall a million times, to feel uncomfortable, to feel vulnerable, to feel awkward, to feel messy, to not feel like you know what you're doing, to feel like a fool? Is that worth it to you to feel that way until 
it all starts coming together because it will start coming together as long as you keep showing up and you keep doing the scary things. But not if you're toe dipping, not if you're just Googling stuff, not if you're just trying to reverse engineer what other people are doing. And I feel I need to say this, but it's also leading to something that I want you guys to do that I've created for you. One of the main things that for whatever reason, none of these online guru people who've, you know, quote unquote, really made it share is if you want to stand out online in any industry, in any niche, I don't care what you are. I don't care if you're a realtor. I don't care if you're a lawyer. I don't care if you're a coach, if you're an influencer, if you're a nail technician, I don't care what you are. If you want to stand out online and get consistent clients and cash, you have to master the art of creating high converting content. And that is written content and video content. And just like mastering anything else, it takes you studying it. It takes you hiring people to help show you how to do it. And it is a shit ton of practice. Some people have a knack for it right away who I've taught and pick it up right away. Some people, it takes them a year. It Everyone's different, but it always hits. And I'm going to teach you the secrets to creating high converting content in a brand new masterclass so that you guys can start doing this during the holiday season. I don't want your asses to have to wait till 2022. Don't tell yourself that lie that you've told yourself in 2021, the lie you told yourself in 2020, 2019, 2018. You know, that I'll really go for it next year. January, I'm really going to go for it. Next year will be my year. Like I'm going to be really serious about growing my business next year because at this point, Every single year, this is when people start feeling really overwhelmed. You feel discouraged because your business isn't where you thought it was going to be at at this time. You didn't hit where you wanted to hit. You've got the change in seasons, all the energy, all the crap going on in the world. You feel overwhelmed. And it is a wonderful temporary sense of relief. And a great form of procrastination to say, you know what, I'm going to enjoy the holidays and, you know, I'm going to do some things, but I'm going to really, you know, I'll really go all in in January, right? I mean, this year has been messy. I'm kind of feeling overwhelmed. We have a lot going on and a lot planned, you know, so I'm going to really go for it in January. I know your asses are saying this to yourself because I've said the same thing to myself and I can't have you doing that anymore. That doesn't work. Do not blow off the remainder of the year if you want to set up your 2022 to be your most profitable year yet. That makes no sense. That would be like you training to run the New York Marathon. And so the last two months before the marathon, you decide to not train at all. Oh, I'm just going to chill and then like I'll really go for it, right? I'll be ready for the marathon. It's like, no, you won't. You'll get a cramp and it, and then have explosive diarrhea on mile six. I've seen it. It's not cute, people. So what I've created is I am teaching you my secrets to creating profitable content. And this is for anyone at any level, in any industry, in any niche. It will absolutely work for you. So you can monetize off all the time you're spending on creating this content and at least know, okay, I'm going to deliberately and intentionally create my content. I'm not going to be doing it from my ass anymore. But you also have to be willing to do it consistently. I will keep and I don't mean like five times a day. It's not like that. You don't need to do that shit. I I can't stand when people tell you you need to do that. I'd rather you have less content, but it's higher quality and well thought out to where it's going to turn a profit and generate potential leads and clients and people enrolling and people signing up and people applying, don't you? So I'm doing this inside a free masterclass. You can sign up for it. It'll. I'm going to be hosting it on Zoom. So you can attend from all over the world in any time zone. It's at projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash masterclass projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash masterclass. 
the details will be on that page. Truly, I don't have the time and the date and everything in my head and perfectly set. But I promise you by the time you're listening to this episode, it's all set because it has to be. And it's in the sign up page. So projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash masterclass. We will be giving you access to the replay for a short period of time after. So if you're at work, if you're on a you know, on an airplane or something like that, you'll you'll still be able to access the replay. But I highly, highly recommend you come on live. One, I'm doing a baller ass giveaway because we don't do anything cheap over here at Project Me. So we're doing a baller giveaway. Plus, if you really say that you want to have your cl- your content convert, you want clients, you want sales, you want to have media exposure, you really want to grow. If you say you want that, then your actions have to match it. And you know, I don't put anything out that's janky or a waste of your time. This is stuff that no one is teaching you. These are the secrets the gurus don't teach you. I don't mind teaching this to you because I want you to have success for my free stuff because then you're only going to be super freaking excited to buy from me. So for you to not attend this, what that says to me is that it's not that important to you. Because you don't even have to actually like watch the screen, although it will be entertaining. I can promise you that because we always know there's props involved. But if you are doing something else, cleaning the house, you're driving or whatever, you can also just listen. There's always a way and there's also the replay. So you're going to want to sign up. I am not offering this again anytime soon. So it's at projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash masterclass. Let's shift gears and talk about another thing that's irritating me online. (laughs) Are you guys liking this episode? Is it validating? Because I know you guys have thought this shit. I, I am not down with all this talk of frog serum, uh, microdosing, ayahuasca-ing, all this stuff. I'm not saying there isn't value in doing that in a safe and controlled environment for some people. But as someone who is a severe trauma survivor, who would have fallen for a lot of these people who are offering this stuff at retreats and events, I would be dead. And it concerns me because if you go to a container, right, you go to you're signing up for a safe container, whether it's inside like my six month mastermind, or you're going to some kind of a retreat, anything like that, You're going to a space that's supposed to be safe. You're opening up and being vulnerable. Then you're taking some sort of substance on top of it that's opening up you up more. If you do not have the support and the guidance and all the things for after you've been opened up, this can be this can be deadly and it's highly irresponsible and it really upsets me. It also can set up people to believe if I just do this thing, this is going to get rid of all of my insecurities, my trauma. And it's not as simple as that. I'm not saying it can't help in a high integrity, very safe and controlled environment with someone who is widely, widely experienced in this. But you have to be really careful. Some, Some of these darknesses and stuff within us are not meant to be explored um, without significant support around us. And it just pisses me off. Any form of simplicity, when someone is trying to oversimplify, right, like all you have to do is one reel a day. And that's how I got 100,000 followers in six months. It's like, then you go and do that one reel a day. And you're, you know, you're making yourself do it. And meanwhile, your following barely grows. And you're like, what's the problem? You start thinking it's you and and you quit. We have to have realistic expectations and not buy into the hype. Going after your dreams and making a shit ton of money and helping a shit ton of people and having high influence and high impact in the world. It is, it takes work and sometimes grueling work. And I'm not meaning you have to work 12 hours a day. That's not what I'm saying. 
but you're going to have to sit in the dirty diaper and it's not as easy and it's not as cute. And you're going to have to work when you don't feel like it. And you're going to have to show up until go look up any entrepreneur who you admire, who's invented a product or who is the founder of a big company, whether it's Drybar, whether it's Spanx, whether it's Rihanna's Fenty line, whatever it is, whether it's a, you know, it's a celebrity, whether it's someone who, uh, the woman who created Squatty Potty, go look up any of these people you've seen on Shark Tank. Not one of them has a story that was like, I just manifested this and I embraced my divine femininity and I followed my calling and my intuition and I only did things when I when I felt called and when it felt aligned. You will not see one of those people say that. That is not a business plan. I'm not saying to not use all those things. Those are tools. Those are assets. Those are attrib- attributes that I want you to lean into without a doubt. I do it all the time. But that is not a strategic business plan. That is not a plan to have customer acquisition. You can have the best courses, the best services, the best knowledge. You can be the best writer. You can have just epic evidence of how many people you help. But if you do not have a clear strategy and a proven process to follow that feels good to you, to convert strangers into paying clients on repeat. You don't have a business. You have a jobby, a time and energy sucking hobby. I, I've seen it over and over again when people come to work with me. A lot of you guys are at the point where it's like you're waving the white flag. Enough's enough. I've got it. I'm sick of myself. I'm sick of messing around. I, I need the goods, Tiff. I need the goods. But I can only help you if you're willing to sit in the dirty diaper, if you're looking for some uh, magic thing to happen in one month. And I'm not saying something can't click in a month for you. I'm not saying that can't happen. I've seen things like that happen, but not if you haven't done the work. No, I've not seen it happen. If I've had it happen with clients who've already come to me, who've done some work, and then we just needed to refine it. I needed to show them a clear plan and a strategy and it clicked and absolutely then the client started rolling in they almost had like a kink and a hose and I unkinked it and then it flowed but they came to me already having done work right if you're starting from scratch you're starting from the beginning you've been doing things from your ass it's gonna take time and that's okay isn't it worth it you've already wasted years of your life not going for it So at least spend time where you know you're going for it and you're doing your part and you're willing to show up until because that's not a waste of time. That's you taking action and you doing the damn thing and you being in willingness and the universe will always match your energy level, your commitment, your devotion, your investment into your dreams. It's just not going to happen at your timing. And by the way, you don't need to be Miss Polly positive. It's not because you, um, you, you're not Miss, you know, I am always have an abundant mindset. You don't have to have that to be successful. If you did, I would be in a lot of trouble. Your goal is to definitely be in a state of um, surrender and showing up and taking action that's in alignment with your goals, that is something I have to manage all day long, every day, right? I make a conscious choice to manage it. But am I like naturally have positivity busting out of my ass? Clearly no, as I just went on an entire rant, right? No, I don't. But what I also know is, is my conviction and my commitment to all of you, my commitment to the people I help, my commitment to my dreams, my goals, my own abundance, my worth, my legacy, I'm willing to show up until, and I'm willing to do what it takes, even though it terrifies me, even though it feels wildly vulnerable and uncomfortable about 90% of the time, by the way, and I'm willing to show up until are you. Are you willing to do that? Because then I can show then I can show you the way and my ways will work. 
But like if you come to this masterclass and you're not willing to show up until and you're looking like, oh, I made five posts based on what Tiffany taught me and she taught me the secrets and they I totally make sense. And I made five posts. Why don't I have a thousand new followers? Well, that's then you're that's not going to work. You have to be willing to do the compound effect when it comes to content and keep showing up until. So go sign up for that masterclass, projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash masterclass. The date, the time, the details are all in there. It's on Zoom. Prioritize it. Send it to a friend who you know is wiped out and over the content monster. Let me show you the way and not wait till 2022 to do it. Why not start this now so you can start growing your audience you can start getting leads now so that when it's 2022, you can cash in cha-ching and make some damn bank. Wishing you guys great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.